Welcome back. Panelists here, NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent Ali Vitale, legal affairs reporter Josh Gerstein, the man who broke the Supreme Court story of all time, if you will, uh, for Politico, former uh, George W. Bush, White House political director Sarah Fagan, and Kimberly Atkin Store, senior opinion writer for the Boston Globe, also a holder of a law degree, so watch out. <laughs> uh, Josh, let me start with you. Um, has it sunk in what this, what your report perhaps has done to the Supreme Court for a generation? Well, it's starting to. I mean, when that large black imposing fence went up around the court uh, earlier in the week, uh, it certainly indicated that the court itself now realizes that whatever decision it issues on this is going to have pretty dramatic, momentous implications and, and probably is likely to anger a number of people on one side or the other. Do you think it's going to change the way you get to cover the court? Um, well, it probably makes it even harder uh, to press some of the issues for access to the court. We've had a lot of yeah. concerns about uh, the court and transparency, even through this period of COVID over the last uh, you know couple of years, but even before that. So um, it, they're probably going to be even more skittish about that than they were before, but it was not a terribly transparent institution to start with. That's for sure. Look, we talk a, a lot of times we'll say, hey, boy, this is going to change everything politically. Allie, this feels, did you sense that on Capitol? Is this actually a moment where we say everything's changing and it's really changing? Well, look, I mean, I think that Democrats and Republicans both have been talking about this in theory for a really long time. I know it's not popular to say we don't know, but this is totally untested. For the last 49 years, women in America haven't had to grapple with wondering if there are protections in place for abortion. And so I think from an electorate perspective, all of this remains untested, and so we'll have to see going forward. I will say on the Hill, Democrats and Republicans took, of course, completely divergent views here. Republicans, of course, focusing on the leak, not the substance. You'd almost be forgiven if you wondered, hey, didn't they push for this for several decades? On the Democratic side, though, and we'll see this next week, they're going to push for a vote on the Women's Health Protection Act on Wednesday. It's going to fail. There seems to be some divide on if it's better if it fails in bipartisan fashion right. or in fully democratic fashion. But nevertheless, it sort of leaves them where they started in terms of having no way to federally codify this. Politically, if you just look at exit polling, uh, Sarah and, and Kimberly, this appears to favor the Democrats. Let me put up some battleground uh, state polling on the abortion issue. Majorities in just about every battleground state in 2020 uh, um, but wanted it legal. Only Texas is sort of the outlier of plurality, 48-45. And you, of course, look at Colorado there, the very libertarian, uh, not a surprise there. Um, so I understand, Kimberly, why Democrats think this is a game changer for them for the midterms, is it? It, it, we'll have to see because this is so unprecedented in the way that it's coming out and it is a midterm election year to boot. We will have to see. I, I think we've talked before about a lot of other issues that Democrats thought would be big motivators and yeah. it turned out not to be. They turned out to fit whether it's gun control, uh, whether it's police reform, and it turned out not to be. So I think we will have to see. I think one thing Democrats really should be thinking about is their long game at this point because this is the result of a Republican long game mm -hmm. that was very dedicated for decades in order to put conservatives in office so that they can put conservatives on courts and then Democrats need to develop something like that. I think it's a bit of a tale of two stories. I, I do think it will motivate Democrats. I don't know how it couldn't. And they've, they are incredibly depressed. You look at polling. Mm -hmm. the, the question, though, is what is the debate? And the debate may cut against Democrats, where you have a very aggressive progressive movement that believes that abortion on demand at any point in a pregnancy, which is not where the public is. So uh, you showed exit polling. It shows people who want abortion legal. The question is, what is the definition of legal? And so if we have a debate in this country in a number of these states where the Democratic candidate is calling for abortion at any point in the pregnancy and a Republican candidate is calling for a more moderate stance, that is going to accrue to the Republican where, Party. Where, where is there evidence that the Republicans have a right. moderate I mean, stance sir, here? There isn't. I mean... That, that's the thing. What you, what you outlined on the left is correct, but I don't what, hear exceptions anymore for rape uh, uh, all the time in many well, Republicans we just, anymore. We just heard Tate Reeves talk about exceptions for rape in the life of the mother. But not incest. And, and that, I imagine that will go through pretty quickly, well, but that, we'll see. But see, that's and, where it, that's, I think, making my and point. And after here. that point, yeah. though, there was a, a law passed in Mississippi on uh, viability at 16 weeks. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, th that as the debate moves to viability, Republicans are in a much stronger position than where the progressive movement is. But is the debate viability? 
Well, I mean, I think the, the real issue is that while there may be a debate, as Sarah is saying, what's going to happen right away if Roe is struck down at the end of June is all these trigger laws and laws that are already on the books from 100 years ago are going to kick in in many, many states. Uh, we're talking maybe 26 states that will almost immediately end up with very severe restrictions or bans on abortion. So the debate may continue, but in those states, women are going to find a great deal of difficulty in getting access. In some states, they may have to travel a thousand miles in order to get an abortion. I was, I was just in South Dakota. It's one of those states with a trigger law, and they've already had one of the most restrictive set of rules there governing what they can do for years. They are so restricted that they're finding they have to have doctors come in from out of state because local doctors are either too worried about the local repercussions or they don't want to do it. And at the same time, they're talking about women traveling over a thousand miles because of just the vastness in some of these rural states. And so when you talk about the trigger law states, effectively what you could end up with is on the coast, those two patches of blue where it's accessible and mostly in the middle of the country where it's not. So you sort of just have have and have not. I mean, I, I, I think there's a look, there's a lot of manufactured outrage happening around this issue. You know, Illinois is completely controlled by Democrats. And uh, these legislatures, I think, will move very quickly around these uh, this legislation. So, yes, there's going to be a period of significant tumult around this, mm -hmm. and people who feel very passionately about the protection of life, um, you know, are going to be loud, but the people who feel pr right. passionate about abortion are going to also be loud, and we're going to spend probably most of this fall talking about abortion. Well, it's interesting, Kimberly, that they, my experience with abortion is the party that overreaches gets punished. And what does overreach look like to the public? Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to get a good idea about what that overreach looks like as these laws come into play. We also need to talk about what voters were talking about, and especially in statewide races, there's always this big focus on women voters, suburban women voters. But keep in mind that a lot of those women will still have access to abortion regardless of what state they live in. It's the others, the people who are in a different position who won't. Uh, I'm going to pause it there. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.